Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to another video tutorial of the Electrical Engineers Academy. This video actually is an additional very important tip that I wanted to highlight in addition to my earlier tutorial video regarding the topic voltage drop calculation. One of my followers have attracted my attention to an important point and confusion which is usually happening with many engineers regarding the number of runs to be used in the voltage drop calculation formula. So what is this tip and how to ensure that you don't fall in this misunderstanding while calculating the voltage drop value. As you recall, the voltage drop calculation formula consists of these factors and finally we divide by the number of runs. So the number of runs is a very important deciding factor in the voltage drop calculation. You need to ensure that the correct number of runs is specified, otherwise many wrong decisions can be taken and it will have a drastic effect on the operation of your power distribution system and personally i have faced this in one of the projects where i have identified a fatal mistake in the voltage drop calculation that had to be corrected and that had a major impact on sizing of the main feeder cables in addition to the commercial impact that this might have so let us go through this and see what is the confusion and how to avoid it. To start with, we have two cases. Let's say, let's limit it to two cases for the sake of simplicity that we need to understand properly in order to do the correct calculation. So, first case we have N runs of multi-core cables. The first case is N runs of multi-core cables. So our load is connecting using N runs. N can be any number from 1, 2, 3, etc. N represents the number of cable runs that we are connecting our load with. The second case will be single core cables, which is the main confusion that many engineers, whether experienced and new engineers are falling into the end had to be clarified so now multi-core cables to do it properly we need to understand how the cables are connected to the terminals i have drawn here three terminals assuming these are three terminals three load terminals this can be a motor this can be a load this can be any type of load that has three terminals r y b so this is our first cable, our first run. You can see here a four core cable. How do we connect the cable to the terminals? This is the R. This is the second core connecting to the second terminal, Y. And this is the third core connecting to the B terminal. So this is a single run cable. Let's see how the second cable run will be connected. This is the first core connecting to the R. This is the second core connecting to the Y. And third core connecting to the B terminal. So what has happened here now? Each terminal is having two connections. One from each cable. So the R here took two cables. The Y took two cables. The B took two cables. So in this case our N will be two. And in the previous if it was only one cable it would be one. What will happen if we add a third run? Again the th one of these cores will be connected to the first terminal. The second core will connect the second terminal. The third core will connect to the third terminal. Uh, Number of runs is the number of current carrying conductors that are connected to each terminal. 
So, in all cases, multi-core cables, when they are sharing the load, you put n equal to the number of multi-core cables, except if it is a star delta starter, where n will be equal to 1. Because in that case, when the motor kicks off, only one run of the cables will be taking the load. So except that case, in the majority of cases, n will be equal to the number of multi-core cables. And I explained it here in detail. Because each terminal is taking a number of cores equal to the number of multi-core cables. In this case, three. So if I add a fourth cable, one of the multi-core cable cores will be connected to each terminal. So the terminals will share the cores of multi-core cable. This is a clearly understood case. Let's move now to the case of n runs of single core cable. And this is the case that usually causes confusion. But I started with the multi-core case so that you can have a mental link, let's say, between both of them to simplify now what we will explain here. So, for this case, I will assume, usually, what is the confusion is that, shall I put, for in this case, 11 runs? Shall I divide by 11? Shall I divide by 4? Shall I divide by, what is the exact number that I shall divide while calculating the voltage drop for a load that is connected using single core cables. In this case, let's assume these are the same terminals. In this case, it can be a transformer because usually transformers are fed by single core, let's say 630 cables. Usually, locally, in the uh, local region in Dubai, let's say, a 1500 kVA transformer is connected using, or any size of transformer, is connected using multi-core cables, single core 630. So, we have here 11 runs of single core cables. What number should be put? Let's see. I want to separate the cables so you will understand how they are connected. You think of the single core cables as multi-core cables. So, in this case now, the same number of... How is the load sharing these cables? Usually, in this case, it can be 9 cables or 11 cables. Since the cables are divided equally on the load, usually here you will have 3, 3, 3 per phase. And the last two will be used to connect the neutral. This is in the case of transformer. This is the usual case of the transformer. So, this case, 11 runs is actually equal to 9 runs of single core cables. So, if I, if I were to connect a motor, let's say, using 9 core of multi-core cables, again, it will be equivalent to this case. Because the last two number of single core cables are not carrying any current. So I will not consider them in my calculation. So how are these terminals? I will explain how these multi-core cables are connected and reach to finally the number that should be substituted in the voltage drop calculation. As you see here, the first set is connected into the first terminal. Again, the second set, the second single core cable to a separate terminal and so on. So we have re reached to a similar connection to the multi-core cable, but the only difference is that the cores are separated. So each one of the cores is a separate segregated cable. Again, a, se a separate single core is connected to the first terminal, another one connected to the second, and so on. You can see the last set also. We are connecting a separate core to each terminal. So now, without me saying, you can easily identify that the correct number of 
n that should be used in the multi-core in a voltage drop calculation of single core cables is equal to 3 in this case. So, to summarize it and to sum up, you substitute n with the number of current carrying conductors, not the number of cables connecting your load. So, in this case, you can see it is n equal 3. For example, let's say I have 6 cables, 6 number single core cables. Since we are dividing the cables, since the current flowing through each terminal is equal, so I will divide the cables equally across terminals, which means 2 cables for the first core, for the first terminal, sorry, 2 cables for the second and 2 cables for the third which means my n would be equal to 2. And similarly for any number of cables, whether it is single core or multi-core. I hope that this have clarified this doubt and this common misunderstanding among engineers and that you will not fall in this trap in any one of your calculations. Thank you for watching this video and looking forward to presenting new ideas and new tutorials. Take care.